One of the topics for tonight's debate is the economy, and nowhere was harder hit by the 2007 economic downturn than Las Vegas itself. Of the 25 zip codes with the highest number of foreclosures, 17 of them were in this one city. A decade later, many of those properties haven't found new owners. But that doesn't mean that they're empty. Across Las Vegas, there are thousands of complaints of squatters taking over abandoned homes. My name is Dawn Loudon, um, 42 years old. I used to have a very successful career. I was in IT consulting. I've been here six months. All of the furniture was here, the power was on. You know, there was, um, this is the room that I've been staying in, the bathroom there. The sliding glass door was open and I climbed over and came inside. Like, through the first probably about a month and a half, I would just kind of stay in the casinos uh, as much as I could, carried my suitcase with me everywhere I went. I didn't have any shoes, and then sleep where I could and, and that kind of thing. I would just eat out of the trash, um, sleep on the ground, sleep wherever you can, walk until you can't walk anymore and, and decide you're gonna sleep right there and um, you do what you have to do to survive. Las Vegas is a transient city. People come, people go. People come here and, and get addicted to gambling and, and then they end up homeless, so we might see more squatting because of that as well. It's a city where people move in and out of. Victoria Seaman is a Nevada State Assemblywoman. She's also a realtor who has dealt with squatters firsthand. The first time I encountered squatters as a realtor, I arrived at one of my listings and the lockbox was gone. And a couple of teenagers came to the door and I said, do you have a lease? And they had one available. I looked at the lease and it was a fake lease. And I realized that these were either squatters or someone who was a victim of squatters. She found that squatters don't just occupy vacant properties. They sometimes act as landlords, renting them out to others on fake leases. And until recently, law enforcement had almost no way of stopping it. Our Nevada revised statutes were so archaic that if you had gone on vacation for a month and there was no sign of breaking and entering and someone moved into your home, you would have to come home and evict them. The police could not do anything. So it was a priority for me to join with other legislators and bring forth legislation that would allow Metro to investigate squatting. So now with Metro, um, they are able to investigate the owners, who owns the house, and things that would have taken a person years to evict someone. Okay, today we're gonna to be doing three squatter houses. Uh, we'll be starting with the Glengarry house. Anyone now that the law has been updated, yeah. police have been more aggressive in clearing out occupied houses. Thousands and thousands of houses were built out here. A lot of this area didn't even exist. It was all desert. So then when you had the downturn in the economy and a lot of people lost their houses, we were really impacted hard with squatters. LT will hold the corner. Just be advised at least three people are inside. What we've typically seen is a direct correlation to a squatter house being the nucleus of crime for that neighborhood, whether it be burglaries go up or selling illegal narcotics. So they're criminals. So you just really never know what's going to be on the other side of the door. Whoa, hey doggy. It looks like it was uh, maybe one person that was in the house as the ringleader, so to speak, and then they were like subletting out rooms to other people. We're letting them just go in and grab whatever they can grab, personal belongings, and then they'll have to make arrangements to come back and get their property at another time. Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman says removing squatters is crucial for the local economy. As these houses turn around, as our community gets involved and reaches to Metro, then we can put the houses on the market, get them sold, because they really devalue the homeowner's properties in the neighborhood. I think we're coming out of it, but we were an absolute panacea for anybody who wanted to find an empty building to move into. The recession hit, people lost jobs, they lost their homes, but they are staying here because they have no other place to go. Where are they gonna be? And it really breaks your heart because what you're doing is saying you go out and live in your car. <laughs>